This podcast is brought to you by Jupiter Medical Center, rated number one for quality, safety, and patient experience. Jupiter Medical Center is your choice for world-class healthcare. With state-of-the-art facilities and leading-edge technologies, their award-winning physicians provide the highest caliber of care for the community. Jupiter Medical Center is proud to announce the opening of the all-new Johnny and Terry Gray Surgical Institute featuring the latest in innovative surgical care. To learn more, visit them at jupitermed.com. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Palm Beach North Podcast brought to you by our friends at Jupiter Medical Center. My name is Noel Martinez, your host, President and CEO of the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce. And today, we're gonna talk about an industry that has a huge impact on our county, the marine industry. Joining us, we have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, Alyssa Freeman. She is the Executive Director for the Marine Industries Association of Palm Beach County. Let me tell you a little bit about the marine industry. It pumps some serious money into our county, a staggering $4.7 billion into our local economy. It supports around 22,000 jobs. Palm Beach County has almost 39,000 registered boaters. That it registered boats, excuse me, not boaters. There's probably a lot more boaters than that, right? Um, so that really like cements us as the, the boat capital of the United States, if not the world. Alyssa and I were talking about that earlier. So we've got a ton to cover. Alyssa, let's get right into it. Welcome to the show. Let's do it. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, hi. So let's start with the Marine Industry Association. A lot of yeah. people don't know what you do. Can you tell us a little bit about it and, and what you guys goals are? Yeah, we're like a little hidden gem in this in this county of ours. Uh, so we are a trade association representing all of the marine businesses in Palm Beach County and boaters. Um, so we've been around since the mid 80s. And it was just a small group of businesses. And there was a lot of different uh, legislation happening that was negative for the industry at the time. And so they all came together. And ever since, it's just been growing. We're a 501c6 not-for-profit. And we have um, over 400 members right now. Oh, wow. And those members are, you said they're made up of a lot of businesses and boaters and just people in the marine industry, right? It's, exactly. It's a, it's a mix of businesses and boaters and businesses of all, all kinds. I mean, there's so many different marine businesses in this County that, you know, people probably wouldn't even think of, but it's, yeah, we're made up of, of all of them. Awesome. 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 So tell me what, you know, moving forward, like talk to me about some of your goals as an association. So the goals for us are obviously every year we want to grow our membership, grow our voice. Uh, we have two big events every year that I know we're going to get into. Oh yeah, we're getting into them. But it's it's growing those events and making sure that those events stay successful. And then on the other hand, it's also making sure that we have public access to our waterways. I mean, access is something that we is on the forefront every year for us. Is there a shortage of that? Like, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, ab absolutely. There is. Um, and it's not getting any better because there's not any more land that we can build on to make more marinas and, and boat ramps, or if there is, it's very little. And so we have the issue where we have more people coming here from out of town and coming to live here. Oh yeah, we Our do. marinas are full right now. Yep. They're full, especially right now it's season. So, um, so we're struggling with, you know, we have these people that want to come here, but they can't, there's nowhere for them to go. And uh, as far as the boat ramps go, you know, we have a lot of people, I go to the boat ramps with my family. And so if you don't get there, during the summer, especially early in the morning, you won't have a spot to park. And so those are issues that we're going to have to kind of navigate as, as we go along. So let's talk about issues, right? So that's yeah. one of the issues that the marine industry is, is facing access to the water, yeah. right? What are some of the other issues that the marine industry is facing? Uh, another one and, and something that I think we need to educate the community more about is um, managed mooring fields. And that kind of goes hand in hand with access. And a lot of people, you're looking at me like, I, I think don't I even know. know. What does I that mean? Know. What does it mean? What is yeah. that? So this is something that it, it's going to be really good once, once, you know, people accept, you know, what it is and, and, you know, and, and all that. So right now there's a lot of boats that are just anchored out in the water, Right. 
Some of them end up sinking. They cause a lot of environmental problems, uh, water quality issues, and uh, cost the taxpayers, frankly, a lot of money. They leak like they leak like fluids, right? Fuel, like sewage, you name it. Oh, it's God. disgusting. Yeah. And so, one way that we can combat that is by making areas that are heavily concentrated where people go to anchor, making those a managed mooring field. And so a county or, or a municipality would take that over, would take that on. They would place uh, mooring balls in the water. Which, so there, I mean, there kind of are in some areas already, but um, they would place those and then people would rent them out like those spaces, like they would a marina slip. Obviously it's not a marina slip, but they would. So they, but it wouldn't be as, as uh, costly as a marina slip. So let's say it's a hundred dollars, maybe $200 a month to stay there and you get weekly trash removal, you get weekly pump out service. You have to make sure on an annual basis that you're submitting your up-to-date registration information. So it's all on the up and up. And I think in the long run, um, it's going to to be amazing for our, our environment. None of that is happening now. There aren't any services out there that not are doing in Palm those. Beach, not in Palm Beach County. There's one that is in Martin County and that's been very successful for a few years now. And so I think that's kind of where we're headed. That's where we need to head. And it's just, uh, again, just educating the community. Cause I think it's just the fear of the unknown and it's been talked about. And, um, and so I get it, but, but we need to do a better job about ed educating the public about it. Great. Yeah. Education is a big part of what we all do, right? Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, it, it's a big deal. It's a big topic nowadays. Yeah. So what is the marine industry doing to work towards more sustainable practices? So one thing, not just our boat show for a lot of the other boat shows, we're working towards sustainability. I mean, it's a huge boat show that comes into town. And so in the past and and it happened every year. I mean, the boat show would leave town and there would be tons of trash left oh, and, yeah. and, and single use plastics. And so now we're working towards, you know, not using any of the single use plastics. And so I know, again, it's not just our boat show, it's the other ones. But then there's also, we were talking about these boats that sink. And so a lot of people don't realize that it's not super easy to just get rid of a boat. Like it, you can't just go and, and give it to, you know, the dump, take it to the dump that easily. There's a lot that goes into it. And um, so there's a lot of talk about creating, you know, recycling for fiberglass for boats and RVs and things like that. So that's something that hopefully will kind of, uh, you know, make its way. To <laughs> yeah. So I've never even thought about that. What happens to a boat when, I mean, what do the, what do you do with a, an old boat that you you're not going to use anymore? It's, it, probably doesn't float anymore. What happens to all that stuff? You have to dismantle it. You have to take it apart. You have to take it to dump, but you can't just, just take it there. I mean, you have to get approval for it and, and it costs, it costs money. So it's just, it's not easy. It's not as easy as people think they <sighs> think, Oh, there's this boat. Let's just get rid of it. But it's not that easy. It doesn't happen like that. It yeah. doesn't. So let's talk about technology, right? Technology is changing every single day and there's gotta be, you know, we, we talk about AI and there's so many cool things out there right now going on. So, what kind of recent advancements or innovations are really going to affect the marine industry? So I'm not a super techie person, uh, but I do know that there's a lot of stuff going on in the electric world right now. So we got a lot of the you know electric vehicles on the road right now. And I know that that's kind of carrying over into uh, the boat world as well. I don't think we're quite there yet um, in terms of that, but I, I'm sure it's it's it'll get there. It's heading there. And then also, um, fun fact, my husband and I were at the Detroit Boat Show a couple of weeks ago. And so there's this new stabilization technology. And normally on like the bigger yachts, it, it's like a given. It's, it's, there, it's there. But they have this new technology that is comes built in. You know, it's not like an extra that you you have to get, but comes built into these like 20 to 30 foot, you know, range boats. And so he was saying you just, you know, put it in, in auto mode and everybody can go everybody can go to like one side of this boat and this boat is not going to to shift. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's great. So we're, we're like, uh yep, we want one of those. Yeah, if we all do, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean as far as like the satellite technology now and GPS and it's it, it's crazy. I don't even know all of it, but go to the, if you go to the boat show, I know we're going to talk about, but if you go to the boat show, you'll see all of it. Yeah. We're going to talk about the boat show. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's probably people out there driving their boats by like an app by now or oh, something. Absolutely. There's probably some crazy oh, stuff yeah. out there. So community engagement is a big, big part of what huge. you guys do. It's huge. Right. And so is um, education, right? We talked yeah. a little bit about that before. So tell me about what the industry association is doing, the Marine industry association to, in, to engage with the local community. So we, well, 
the biggest thing for us right now is engaging with our youth. So that's that's really our number one priority. And so we have wonderful partners with Career Source Palm Beach County, Junior Achievement. This, we've been working with the school district and uh, really just talking to the youth about all of the career possibilities in the marine industry. And that's been really exciting. Let's talk about that. So yeah. what kind of career opportunities are there for young people? Like, because the, there's more than just being a boat captain. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's fun. That's I mean, a fun part, it's a but fun, it's fun. There's probably but a lot of really fun we, jobs. Here. We need skilled trades workers. We need carpenters, electricians, plumbers. And so we, one of our challenges right now is an aging workforce. And so we need to build that talent pipeline right now. And so that's why we're trying to get in front of as many students in our county as possible because they just don't know. I mean, they see the boats and they see the water and, but they don't think about it as an opportunity, as a career opportunity. And so that's been um, that's been one of my biggest missions is is getting out and talking to them and letting them know that they don't necessarily need to have a four or six year degree. They can go to trade school. Palm Beach State College has a fantastic program. And so, um, yeah, so just just talking to them about that and, and the, the opportunities for for making money is insane. Oh, it's I mean, insane. The, the potential. Yeah, the career, the income potential is is great. Yeah. You could come out of high school and get some sort of certification and you're making 80, 90, hundred thousand dollars a year Absolutely. without a four year degree. Yeah. Right. And with no exactly. school debt. So, exactly. I mean, there's some amazing opportunities out there in that career in, in, in your industry for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the pandemic. I hate talking about the pandemic, but the pandemic really had a crazy effect on the Marine industry. Right. Yeah. I would say the pandemic kind of hurt a lot of businesses and a lot of industries, but it did the exact opposite to the marine industry. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, the pandemic was great for the <laughs> marine industry. It's kind of crazy. It's fun to talk about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, everybody went out and everybody wanted a boat. And so, you know, we, plus people were moving here. Mm -hmm. So not only were people all, you know, trying to get a, their hands on a boat, but we had people moving here and then getting boats or bringing their boats down with them. And so it was just, it was crazy. So you mentioned our economic impact at the beginning at 4.7 billion. Uh -huh. A couple of years before the pandemic, it was 2.1 billion. That is nuts. Isn't I didn't that know crazy? That. That's crazy. It, it more than doubled wow. just in that five year, four or five year period. And we all knew that it, it, you know, had grown, but I didn't think it was going to be that significant. However, the downside was everybody wanted a boat. And so there was some supply chain issues, or if you needed maintenance done on your, on your boat, there were issues there. But since then, uh, we've worked through those. So it's kind of plateau. We're, we're at a, like a plateau, but a comfortable plateau right now. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not going up as much as, as we were. And, and that's okay. I think. Yeah. And, and you know what? Boat prices went through the roof yeah. too. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, you know, you, first of all, it's supply and demand, right? You can't, yeah. you can't get a boat. They're hard to find. Prices keep going up. Yep. Um, so it's kind of like, um, it, it's, it's crazy how expensive boats are these days. Yeah. They, and it's funny because we, we bought our boat at the perfect time. We bought our boat in the spring of 2020 and we're like, Best decision ever. <laughs> yeah, right in time because you were able to spend so much time in the water during the pandemic probably, yeah. right? Yeah, and then yeah. some people were waiting two years for a boat. I mean, they put an order in for a boat and they're like, yeah, it's two years, maybe you'll get your boat. Oh Lord. Yeah, right? All right, so let's talk about advocacy. You touched on that earlier, yeah. right? I think um, I say all the time, the most important thing that the Chamber of Commerce does is advocate for our businesses. Yeah. Well, you do the same thing for the marine industry. So let's talk a little bit about advocacy. How does your association stay ahead of regulations and any legislation that might impact the marine industry? So we have a fabulous team of lobbyists up in Tallahassee. So they monitor anything state wide related for us. And then um, we have our government affairs com uh, committee members and then my team at my office. So anything local county or, or we, we monitor all the agendas for all the local municipalities, um, we'll be stay up to date on that. So we're constantly monitoring and I'm sure just like you and your team, we're constantly monitoring agendas. And if there is anything and our hopes are that, you know, before something comes up, somebody reaches out, but if not, you know, we've, we've created these relationships over the years. So it's usually just a phone call or an email and, you know, setting up a meeting or whatever, but yeah, it's important. Yeah, no, it absolutely is important. It's the most, again, most important thing that yeah. we do in our world. Right. Um, and I know that when we put our legislative agenda together, we share it 
with you all and you guys give us some feedback and we try to include anything that is gonna affect the marine industry because it has such a huge impact on Palm Beach County, specifically in Palm Beach North. And, and I, I, you know, I always brag about Palm Beach North, but um, you know, specifically anything that has to do with Palm Beach North, we collaborate right. in a lot of stuff together. Yep. So thank you for that. What can the local businesses or residents do to help your advocacy efforts? Well, if you're a business, especially marine business, join. Join our association. Sell it. Yes, yeah. sell it right now. Go sell we, it. I mean, we we do. We work <laughs> yeah. on their behalf, and so I mean, that's that's just what we do. So that's how that's how people can get involved. And then you know, if you're just a, a regular resident who wants more information, I mean, we have a great website. We have a great social media presence. So just follow us and see what we're up to because we're we're always doing something. Yeah. If you haven't, if you don't follow the Marine Industry Association on social media, if you haven't seen their website, please go. Tons of good information in there for new boaters, for seasoned boaters. They tell you about any kind of legislation that's coming up. You guys do an amazing job with that. Um, and uh, yes, join the organization. I say all the time that, you know, we are stronger together than we are individually, right? That's how Palm Beach North Chamber started back in 1948, right? Because yeah. there was an issue that affected the business community yeah. and that one business decided, hey, let's all meet at my house on my front porch back in 1948 to fight this issue that we wanted to fight. So glad you said that because that's an important part of what we do. Yep. Economic impact, $4.7 billion. Yes. Billion with a B, not billion with an M. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. <laughs> Absolutely huge, huge, huge economic driver. What is that made up of? Like, where does that come from? Is it tourist? Is it boat sales? Is it boat repair? Talk to me about the industry and where are all those pockets of money coming from? Yeah, so the the two main sectors that make up a majority, I would say 60 to 70% of that impact is going to be retail and service. So marine retail, dealerships, um, and then service, obviously anybody that, that works on any boats, those are the two main sectors in Palm Beach County. And then there's also manufacturing. We don't have as ma as much Marine manufacturing in Palm Beach County as, you know, other areas of the country or state. Um, but that makes up about 10% of it. And then, um, there's uh, storage dockage like marinas. So that makes up the other. Why do you think people find and people in Palm Beach County? Why are they so into boating? What is it? What is it about Palm Beach County? I think, and it's, I mean, I've lived in other areas, but the water here is so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I was just out on the water on Sunday and I was on Saturday. Okay. I was on Saturday. It was gorgeous. It's, and I've been, we've been to other places in Florida and I swear we live in paradise, Palm beach County, Palm beach North is so beautiful. There's nothing like it. Um, proximity to Bahamas. So I think a lot of people yeah. use Palm Beach County as kind of their their landing place to get ready to go head over to the Bahamas. You can get out of the Jupiter Inlet and be in the Bahamas, what, hour and a half? Cu couple of, yeah, a couple hours, depending right. on where you're going. But yeah, yeah, a few, yeah I mean, a few hours. And then um, the diving is fantastic here. Yes, it the is. Diving, Blue Heron Bridge, or we have tons of reefs offshore. And then um, fishing. The fishing's great here. People come from all over to fish here. Our, we're close to the Gulf Stream. And so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a few reasons, but I mean, they all collectively just make this a great place to boat. For the record, that was not the CEO of the Palm Beach North Chamber saying that, because I always say how amazing. <laughs> I always brag about we have the best of everything, but we really do. And, we really do. And you just hammered that home. Our, yeah the boating, the Marine, I mean, just the water, our waterways are second to none here mm -hmm. in Palm Beach North. So really proud of that. Glad you said that. So the association puts together some amazing events and we've got to yeah. talk about it because one of the big events is coming right up here this week. When this show comes out, it's going to be the weekend before the Palm Beach International Boat Show. But before we get to that, yeah. I want to talk about my real favorite event ever is the boat parade. Me too. And let's talk about the history of the boat parade and, and well, tell me more about the boat parade. T tell us what it is for people that don't know okay. and that aren't from here. Yeah. What is our boat, our boat parade? It, it is, is our, our boat parade. It yeah. is. It belongs to the whole community. So people come out and they decorate. So you said, I mean, we have, we have close to 39,000 registered boats here. So people decorate their boats. Like you would decorate your home for the holidays. They have tons of lights, inflatables. They dress up in costume. They have music. I mean, they go all out. So, um, there's about six, I want to say about 60 boats that are in the lineup every year from North Palm beach to the Jupiter lighthouse. Uh, we have a fireworks barge that leads the way. So 
you have a whole fireworks show. We say it's the brightest night of the year. I mean, I think it's better than Fourth Fourth of July. Well, sometimes it's like three fireworks show, right? Because they hit, they do a, a fireworks display entire, at every bridge on every bridge, yeah, right? Or by every bridge. Really? I mean, yeah, they're they're shooting off the entire route, and I, I want to say there's there's definitely more than three. There's okay. probably like close to eight firing locations. Um, so everybody that's the, and it's great because it's a free event. I mean, all you have to do is go to any of the parks along the waterway, um, tons of restaurants that you can visit. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's for everybody. It's for families. It's for everyone. And you guys give back, right? Yes. So talk about that. So well, the other part of the boat parade mm -hmm. is the toy drive. So we do an on the water toy drive and we ask everybody that comes to watch the parade to bring a toy or multiple toys with them. And we have a fleet of volunteer toy, we call them toy boats that come and they will pick up the toys from people along the seawalls and just along the entire parade route. And so last year we were able to collect more than 15,000 toys. It's nuts. Crazy. And the whole parade's on live TV, right? Yeah, so we broadcast. Yeah. We broadcast uh, from North Palm Beach Marina, and then um, it airs, you know, later on, so people can can rewatch it back. And so that's kind of something new that we've been doing. But it didn't start like that. I mean, it started gra grassroots, just like the association did, and um, it start actually started at Peanut Island. I think it, long ago it started down in like West Palm Beach, and so the routes kind of changed over the years. But uh, we're we're happy with with it now because no matter where you go, you have a great view of the parade. And so uh, is, is it going to continue to grow? Like, is there room for more boats? I mean, are we That's maxed a out? Great question. Or like, we are going to max out at a certain point because the bridges can only stay open for so long. Oh, good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. So once we get to about, I think 80 boats, we're going to have to shut it down. So you heard it now, right? Go out and sign up for it. I don't know if you could register yet, probably, because we just- I think you can, actually. Yeah, it's on our, that's on our website, too, marinepbc.org. But yeah, I think you can register your boat right now. And uh, so, yeah, if, if anybody has a boat or wants to charter a boat, do, do it, it now. Do it. You won't regret it. <laughs> it is. It is an awesome, amazing night. So let's talk about the big boy. Yeah. The Palm Beach International Boat Show, which takes place this weekend. Yeah. I just heard a stat, the number two in the world in boat sales yeah. for a boat show, right behind Monaco. That's, behind Monaco. That sounds pretty cool, right? I know. We're in the same thing as Monaco, mm -hmm. right? So talk to us about the Palm Beach County Boat Show. That alone has a huge economic impact. Can we talk about that? We totally can. Yeah. yeah. So we just did an economic impact study for uh, the Palm Beach International Boat Show. I think it's two years now. It's only two years old, but over a billion dollars with a B impact just in Palm Beach County. In four days. In four days. Four day of it. Yeah. And to put that in perspective, the Miami International Boat Show is number one in the world. They have, I think, a 1.3 billion impact. So we are right behind just that. behind, just behind. So we, So that's like a massive, massive undertaking. Yeah. So talk to us about what it looks like behind the scenes. What does it take? To, to produce an event like that, when do you start planning for it? I wish I could say that I set the whole boat show up by myself, but <laughs> I don't, and uh, my, my staff doesn't either. Uh, so we have an amazing partner. So since a little bit of history, if you wanna yeah, want let's some go. boat show history. Far so away. it's about 40 years old. And so it started in Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens was actually the first location. So it, it was rooted in Palm Beach North. Palm Beach Gardens moved, moved around a few times to Riviera Beach and some other places. And so, um, in 1995, we decided let's, let's, uh, let's step this up a bit more. And that's when it really became an international show. We partnered with a company called show management and they were doing a bunch of other boat shows around the country in the world. And so we partnered with them and they really took it to the next level. And so since 1995, it's been downtown West Palm beach. It's been an international show and Informa does Fort Lauderdale show. They do Miami, they do Monaco, they do St. Pete. They do all, I mean, they do all the big boat shows. So they're so professional and they, they move in about a week or two before and they move out within a week after. And it's just incredible. So for someone that's never been to the boat show, mm -hmm. talk to me, what is it like? Like I, I can't it's like fun. So I think the biggest misconception is that you have to be super into boating or have a boat to go, but it's an experience for everybody. So not only are these, there are these, you know, super yachts lining the docks. That are um, just barely out of my budget. Ba just barely, barely. barely. Yeah. But not only do we have that, but we have tons of what we were talking about technology. So there's all the technology. If you have any, like, you know, 
geeky people that want to like nerd out on all the, the crazy technology. But we also have the cocktail barges with live music. Oh, that's we my have part. we have uh, <laughs> clothing, jewelry, yeah. like every mm-hmm. everything. So it's just it's it's a little bit of everything, and you could definitely spend. Oh, an entire day there. And, and the kids, you could bring your kids, right? All kinds of activities for the kids to do. There's like, aren't there like fishing demonstrations so, and yeah, stuff? Yeah, there's fishing demos mm-hmm. on the weekends. And then the other cool thing is uh, Nautical Ventures does this aqua zone every year. And so they're out in the water demoing all of the coolest, latest um, water toys. So that's always a fun show to watch. And the kids love it. So what can we, what's going to be new this year? What can we expect? So I heard that you, this year we're going to have more super yachts than we've ever had before. It, it would, how do you just people that have signed up? That's how you yeah. get. All right. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be one of our, I don't know exactly what we're, we're still working on the details. Um, I don't know specifically which ones, but there's usually some, some pretty, pretty cool. And we had the honey fits last year, yeah, that thing's, which was sweet. really cool, which is, you know, parked in Northern Palm Beach North, right? It is. It's in Palm Beach. It North, sure so. is. So I'm excited to see like these yachts, who do they, be, who owns them? Who do they belong to? You know, they they all have stories, oh, which, yeah. which is fun. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. yeah. You know what? One day I've got to invite those guys to come in and talk about the honey fits and talk about that. You story. should. That'd be a fun it's podcast. Cool. Yeah. Got to do that. Cause there's some really cool stories about that. All right. So, um, so many boat shows across the country. You just named like five of them here yeah. in the last conversation. Right. <laughs> there's a lot. So, and you know, we just said that we're one of the top ranked boat shows mm-hmm. in the country in, if not the world, yeah. what makes us different? Like so what's so different? Everybody loves it? our, sh- everybody loves Palm beach. And and I'm not just saying that, like I talk to people from all over the country that come to Palm beach every year. They say it's their favorite because, well, first of all, we live in again, paradise, we do. It's Palm beach mm-hmm. um, or West Palm beach. And it's in one location. So with a lot of these other shows, especially the bigger ones, you, it's all segmented into different locations. So you have to get on a shuttle or a water taxi or what it's like, it's a lot of work. But our show, it's all in one spot and you have the the restaurants right there, the hotels right there within walking distance. Everything is in within within walking distance. You could distance. take the bright line, get off the bright line, the bright get a shuttle been right huge. over. Huge, yeah. exactly. The bright line's been huge. Um our airport's right there. I mean, it's so convenient. It is. Yeah, so, the city of West Palm does a really, really good job of of getting people in and out of there. And yeah, they, they're fantastic. They're, to they're, work they're really with. well. They set up well for it. Yeah. So let's talk about you. Is that okay? okay. Can we talk a little bit about Alyssa? <laughs> okay, sure. All right. So tell us a little bit about you. Where you grew up. Tell us about your family. Okay. Give us a little background. Okay. So background is that I grew up in Michigan, and I originally, uh, originally I was gonna thinking about getting into healthcare. I don't know. And then I got, I got to college and I had, I don't even remember his name, but I have had a chemistry professor and he was like, what, what are you getting into? What are you, what are you majoring in? And, uh, he was like, you really, you should go into public relations. And at the time I had absolutely no idea what that was. And so I did some research and I'm like, yeah, that sounds fun. Like that sounds right up my alley. So I completely switched majors and I uh, became a communication major And so I was looking for a job thinking I was going to work in the auto industry. And I graduated in the the wonderful year of 2008. And um, the auto industry was going bankrupt and we hit a recession. And so it scared the crap out of me. And I just made as many connections as I possibly could working. I was working, you know, I worked throughout college, you know, so I had a few different jobs. And so I was just networking with people and I ended up finding talking to somebody who knew somebody down here running the association and was hiring. So that's how I ended up down here in 2008. And, and you started off as a PR and you, you were doing marketing for the association. Yeah, I was, I was basically, it was the executive director and me, we were the only two people. So and how I, long have you been with them now? Almost 16 years. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're not old enough to be there 16 I years. <laughs> oh my Crazy. God. I know. So yeah. So that's how, that's how it all started. And I, I've never left cause I love it. So what's the best part of your job? Um, I get to do some really cool things. I get to, I, I just love the water. So, I mean, if anybody knows me, they know that the marine industry is me and I am the marine industry. Like, it's just who I am. It's a part of me. I grew, so I, the other part is I grew up boating with my family. And so, and I had never thought, like the kids now, like I never thought about it as a career opportunity. I thought only about like, oh, I can go work in the auto industry because I grew up, you know, around Detroit. But, uh, but yeah, so 
it's just being on the water and getting to do all these, the boat parade, the boat show, like doing all these fun events, meeting all kinds of cool people and all of our members. It's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. Well, a lot of work. And so what would you say is the hardest part of your job? The hardest part is probably we do a lot of stuff with with a little, with a small staff. So I have, I have a small staff. It's me and two other full-time people. And so we're really just busy all the time. And so that, and then obviously, you know, we're working with, and you can probably relate, but we're working with so many different people and different personalities and just having to, you know, try to navigate, you know, the different personalities could, could be a challenge. We, we both answer to boards. We Board both of- answer to boards. <laughs> So there's that, but you know, we, we get, we get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've been doing it for 16 years. So you've got some, you're figuring something <laughs> yes, out. <I've>, yeah. <laughs> so what about mentors, right? We all have mentors. There's a lot of people that have really influenced me in my life and, and have really like changed the direction on, on where I ended up. Um, so talk to me about that. What, you know, do you have any mentors or, so, or anyone that's really influenced you? I would say like my first professionally, my my first influential person was my first boss at the association. Her name was Allison Pruitt and she's the one who hired me. So um, thank you for hiring me, Allison. And so I learned a lot from her and we didn't get to work together for that long. I think it was only a couple of years, but she was one of those tough love people where she just sort of like threw stuff at me and was mm-hmm. like, and it was just like the two of us really. So here, you know, do this or do, and I just had to figure it out. Cause I mean, if I went to her too much to ask her like how to do something, she would be like, really? You know? <laughs> so yeah. So Can't wait for her to see this. <laughs> so that, yeah. So I, I, pre- I appreciate it though, because when she did leave, it was easier for me to, to take on more responsibility and kind of take, it was more seamless. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that, that was good. And then also somebody else that we both know, um, Tamara Fitzgerald. Oh, I love I Tamara. Know. Tamara, we love you. Tamara. Love you. Tamara's getting the shout out. Yeah. So I've known her for almost as long as I've been with the association. And so she was doing a lot of like, you know, marketing stuff for us. And now she sits on our board. But um, I just learned a lot. You're not, Tamara, you're not one of those difficult personalities we were talking about earlier. No way. No. Well, she's somebody that I could, I feel like if I have an issue or whatever, she's the person that I can go to. Mm -hmm. And she has great advice. And I just, I just, I've, over the years, I've learned a lot from her and she knows, she knows this. So yeah, I have too. And yeah. she, she gives a lot of tough love too, boy. She, oh, she's tough love she's, too. <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I've you learned know? a lot from her over the years and you know what? She's, she's taken really good care of both of us. Yeah. Really. Of yeah. both of us. So yeah. we didn't talk about your family. We got to okay. talk about your family. You've got an amazing, awesome family. I've been fortunate enough to meet them. So yeah. let's talk about your family. Okay. So I have a husband. Pretty cool guy. Yeah. He's a cool guy. Yeah. We've been, we've been married for almost 15 years. That's awesome. Yeah. So we've been married a long time, got married young and, uh, and, and, he, he, and he, he, what does he do? He, he works, uh, in law enforcement. Yeah. He's yeah. a police officer. He yeah, is. He's yep. awesome. So, um, so yeah, he's great. And, uh, he moved down here for me. So he followed me down here. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. How'd you get him to move down here? He, yeah. We were, we were dating. I think we had just gotten engaged and I'm like, I really want to do this. And he's like, okay. So yeah. So he followed me down here and then, um, now we have two girls. Mm-hmm. So we started our family down here. So I have a 10 year old. I have one that's going to be six in a few weeks. So what are um, they like? Are they like mom or are they like dad? Uh, or a little mix of both. They're probably a mix of both, but they're just like us and that they love the water. They love going out on our boat. Um, they love being busy. And so it's just, it's been fun to watch them grow, although they're doing it way too fast. Oh but, my God. Yeah. Like yeah, we were just know. talking about my daughter. My daughter's yeah. got a full-time job now. My yeah. youngest. It's crazy, crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. So, all right. Last question. Last question. Cause we, I could be here all day yeah. talking about boats and <laughs> being know, outside fun, on the water. Right? It's so much fun. You do have a fun job by the way. What do you, you know, what kind of advice can you give someone that wants to get involved in the marine industry, right? Or wants to be Alyssa Freeman one day? What kind of advice would you give them? So I tell young people this all the time, just network with, network with everybody, you know, don't, you can't be afraid to talk to people. And so, and you learn so much from talking with other people. Um, And the other thing is don't be afraid to, I think now there's just this entitlement in the world where people think they're going to, you know, finish school and, and be us. And that's just not usually the case, if ever the case. And you have to be okay with starting somewhere and working your way up. And that's what I did. And I know that's what you did. And so, but you, 
you, you have to take advantage of that and learn from that and learn from everybody around you. You know, it's so important. So I guess that's my best advice. That's great advice. That's really, really, really good advice. All right. What do you, what have we not talked about? Is there anything you want to tell everybody at home? Obviously we've got something coming up this weekend. We do. So why don't you talk about that? Talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so please everybody join us for the Palm Beach International Boat Show yep. this weekend. Mm -hmm. You can go to pbboatshow.com, get your tickets. They're uh, all online. Everything's online. So there's not going to be a ticketing booth there. Um, so make sure you get your tickets and it's going to be a super fun time. Like I said, something for everybody to do and, um, and let, hit me up if, yeah. if you're there, yeah. please <laughs> follow and follow them on social media, right? They do a really good job of getting all the information out there, letting you know what's going on. And it, you guys do a really, really good job of that. So if you haven't done that, make sure to do that. Yeah. And then the only, uh, only other thing I didn't talk about Go, shoot. And, it, and, it, and it goes hand in hand with the boat show is mm -hmm. we started our Palm Beach international boat show gives back grant program. Tell me about that. Brand uh, new. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Yep. We just, we started working on this about a year ago. And so we were talking about community engagement and the association has been giving away around a quarter of a million dollars a year to local nonprofits. And very much like under the radar, I think. So we partnered with Informa, our show producers, and we we pooled half a million dollars together. That's amazing. And so uh, we put out um, the application for nonprofits to apply, and they're all local, all like Palm Beach County. Does it have to be marine in the marine industry? So they don't, but okay. it has to be like a marine related program or project or like a waterfront type project. Okay. And so we had over 30 applicants this year. And we just had uh, recently our grant reception. We awarded 25 local nonprofits, a total of half a million dollars. And so we're super proud of that. And I want everybody to know that we're not done. We're going to be doing it again. And so we're going to open up the applications again at the end of the summer. So definitely, you know, st stay tuned and follow us um, on social media and you'll learn all about it. But we can't wait to to grow that grant program. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, Sounds like you. a great program. That's the first I heard of it. So I'm glad uh, you brought that up on the show. Let's uh, thank you so much for being here. Cannot wait for the boat show this weekend. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Might have a few cocktails there, enjoy the sun, be outside yeah. and look at all these boats that I can't afford. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. <laughs> so thanks again for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate you always um, checking us out. Please make sure to like, follow, share. Tell all your friends about the Palm Beach North podcast, and we look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.